Oh my God, this is going to be huge. This is the entire length of this room. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> All right guys, today I've gotten out the big puzzle board because I am doing a puzzle that is 13 feet long, but only eight and a half inches tall. This is the 3000 piece Metamorphose puzzle featuring the MC Escher artwork. I bought this on eBay and when they sent it, they sent it in four sections, like four separate bags. So if I wanted, I could do it in four sections, but I am here to do a 3000 piece puzzle, not for like, 800 piece puzzles. So I am going to mix them all together. All right, here we go. I'm mixing the first two bags. No going back now. <laughs> ah, there they go. Oh my God, I can't believe I've done it. <laughs> I can't believe I signed up for another giant puzzle. <laughs> so I'm going to get started on the puzzle in just a minute, but before I do, I wanted to let you know that today's video is sponsored by the Curiosity Box. I showed you guys the Curiosity Box a little while ago, and I am so happy to work with them again because I think this would make a great gift for the holidays, especially if you're trying to think of a gift for that person that seems to have everything and you just don't know what to get them. The box is developed by the team behind Vsauce, which is a science and learning channel here on YouTube. And so it's just filled with all kinds of science and educational goodies. You get over a hundred dollars worth of value in each box for under $50. And the thing that I am always most excited about in the boxes is the puzzle. So in the fall box, you get the Soma Cube puzzle and I'm about to take it apart. So it comes all wrapped up and then it comes apart into all these different pieces. And then you have to try to figure out how to get them back together again into a cube. I really don't think I'm gonna solve this here on camera, so, um, yeah, I'll just go work on that myself off screen. <laughs> Plus proceeds from every single box go towards funding Alzheimer's research, which is such a good cause. So if you're interested in getting a Curiosity Box subscription for yourself or as a gift for someone else, you can go to this URL and use promo code KAREN10 to get $10 off of your subscription. Once again, thank you to Curiosity Box for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to the puzzle. And we are back to the puzzle. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about where this puzzle came from. This is made by the company Sella Gioshi, which is uh, based in Italy. I am sure that I am saying that wrong, so I apologize to every Italian out there. This is actually a fairly rare puzzle. They show up on eBay, but they're kind of expensive. I got mine for a little cheaper than normal because the box has this discoloration all over it, um, but the pieces themselves seem totally fine. So I thought that was a fair trade-off. I don't know exactly what year this was made. Um, I found other puzzles from the same company that look like they're from the same series, which were made in 1983. So, 
I'm going to assume that this one was also made around 1983. And I don't know where this company came from because all that I can find by them are other Escher puzzles. It seems like that's all that they made. So if anyone is more familiar with Italian puzzles and can give us a little more background on this brand or this puzzle, uh, feel free to leave a comment right down below. In the meantime, taking a quick look at the pieces, they seem totally solid, you know, perfectly fine quality, um, reasonably thick cardboard. I really like this kind of light green color that's on the back of them that the cardboard is made of. I think it looks so pretty. It perfectly matches the colors on the front. In terms of glossiness, um, these pieces are a little bit glossy. You do get a little bit of sheen at exactly the right angle, but they're not overly shiny. And then in terms of my game plan, so here on the front of the box, you can see how this basically connects down here, this one connects down here, and then this one connects down here. So this is the design on the puzzle, but eventually I'll be able to put them all together into one really long rectangle. But to start with, I think I am going to do it in these four sections just because that's what's going to fit on my puzzle board. So obviously I'm going to separate all of the edges. That'll give me like the framework to work from. And then I was thinking I would also separate all of these red pieces. And then we have some green here and some green here. So I think I'll also grab the green pieces at the same time. At the beginning and the end of the puzzle, we have basically the exact same texture. So I feel like that'll be the most difficult because it's two spots that basically share the same group of pieces. So I'll probably leave that to last, but the design seems distinctive enough that I don't think it'll be too, too difficult. Although, you know, I have said that in many videos before, and then I ended up like ripping my hair out and crying. So we'll just see. For now, let's start sorting. All right, I just finished the sorting and that took exactly an hour and 20 minutes. I actually wasn't planning to go all the way through all in one go, but I just got into the groove and so here we are. So one thing I noticed while I was sorting is that all of the pieces are this standard piece shape. There's no variation in the piece shape at all. So I definitely think that's going to make it much harder. I mean, just looking at this box, there are so many pieces that are just lines. So this might be a little more difficult than I anticipated, but we will cross all of those bridges once we get there. For now, I'm going to take a little break and then I'll be back to start working on the edge. All right, I've been working on the edge for about a half hour now, and look at what I just noticed. So when I bought this puzzle, I thought it was just one long continuous puzzle all the way through, but look at how many edge pieces we have. Um, that is definitely not the case. It turns out, I, I'm pretty sure it is four smaller puzzles with edges, you know, where they, 
where they separate into these columns. So here with these green um, like geometric shapes, you can see that these edges line up with each other. And that is the top here and the bottom there. I also realized that most of the pieces, all of the long edges have this black border. And so I was just able to separate all of these pieces that don't have that border right on the edge. And I'm pretty sure those are all of the shorter edges. So I should be able to finish up the shorter edges pretty quickly. And then I'll have just a whole lot of black and white pieces to figure out how they go together. This is already a much trickier puzzle than I originally anticipated. I feel like I'm using all of my brain power, so I guess I've gotta get back to it. Okay, so remember earlier today, like literally just a few hours ago, when I was like, I don't think it'll be that hard. I am already eating my words. This is one of the most difficult puzzles I've done lately. As you can see, I didn't even finish the edge and I just worked on it for over two hours. The problem is just that there are literally only four colors in this entire thing. There's the red, the green, and then obviously black, and then the cream colored background. So there's just not a lot to go on. Everything kind of looks the same. I wanted to get at least one of the sections fully finished today, and I got this one mostly done, although one edge is longer than the other edge, and I think these two pieces do go together, so like something in here is not quite right, but I'm just exhausted. I will take a closer look at that tomorrow and finish the edge tomorrow. I think I'm done for the day. <laughs> this is so hard. I thought this would be easy and it's not, it's so hard. My brain hurts, everything hurts. Literally everything hurts. When I was planning out my week, I had only budgeted two days to film this puzzle video. And I think I might need to do a little rearranging on my to-do list because we are halfway through day two and I only just finished the edge. But as you can see, I have the edge all together. I have four rectangles that are exactly the same shape. It is a little disappointing that these rectangles don't actually connect to each other or like interlock with each other. It really is just four rectangles that you have to place end to end and that's how you get the 13 feet that they say on the box. I spent another hour and 40 minutes on the edge this morning, which means that in total, it took me four and a half hours just to do the edge. That is wild. Do you remember in the 6,000 piece sections of the giant puzzle, it would only take me like 25 minutes to do the edge because that was such an like a much easier image. This one took me four and a half hours. 
thinking about what I'm gonna do next, like which section I'm gonna tackle, I think I'm actually going to start with the green, even though there are three separate sections that have green on it, I think that the textures between those three small sections are each like different enough that it'll be easy enough to figure out what goes where. Whereas the red, it's only one section, but it's a much bigger section and it kind of all looks the same all the way down that section. So I think that'll be more difficult than the green. I'm hoping that as I move into the middle, it'll be a little easier just because I have more of a framework of what goes where. And also because now I have a better sense of how the scale from the box like translates to the actual image. Like I know about what size I'm looking for of each shape. So, you know, we'll see. Time to get started on the green. It's like 1 p.m. now, so I have the entire afternoon to work on it. So I will check back in at the end of the day. All right, welcome to day three of the Escher puzzle. This is taking so much longer than I thought. I didn't film an update at the end of yesterday because I was just so exhausted. Something about this puzzle, it's so difficult that it just makes me like so tired after working on it for a little bit. This is definitely one where ideally you would do it in small sections, like just doing a little bit at a time, but as someone who is making a video about it and has a deadline, you know, I kind of just have to power through. But luckily the inside parts have so far been much easier than the border. So I managed to finish all of the green sections pretty easily yesterday. And then today my task will be the red section. And one thing I wanted to point out is that even though we only have the one piece shape, it is pretty easy to tell which ones go vertically and which ones go horizontally. So I can separate out the like longer pieces versus the wider pieces. And then, you know, when I'm looking for a piece like this, I only have to look at half of the pieces. So also last night I started going back through the black and white box and I am so intimidated. Look at how many pieces there are that are just like stripes. This is wild. So it's actually 1 p.m. now. I didn't work on it this morning. I took a little bit of a break and I just got back from having lunch with a friend because I feel like it's healthy to get out of the house and talk to a real person every so often. So now I am re-energized. I'm ready to tackle the puzzle again. My goal for today is to finish all of the red pieces and then, you know, we'll just see where we are.
man, four hours later and here we are. I have officially finished all of the pieces with any sort of color on it, which means that every single piece that is left is now just black and white. Wish me luck, why do I do this to myself? So obviously I finished this red section, which was my goal for the day. I also kept working on these hexagons as well as these bugs, which was very upsetting for me because I really hate bugs. So don't wanna look at that anymore. Glad most of that is done. All right, that's enough for today. I will see you all bright and early tomorrow. All right, with this piece, I have officially just finished my first complete section of the puzzle. Ah, that's so exciting. And here it is, the final piece of the second section. So now all, both of these middle sections are completely finished. All that is left are the checkerboards and then the stripes at the end of the first and the last section. So do you remember when I thought this was going to be a two-day puzzle? Well, welcome to day five. Of course though, I have left the most difficult part for last. So as you can see, this is the texture we're going for. It's this checkerboard that then turns into these stripes with metamorphose running all the way through it. Um, I separated the pieces again so that these are only stripes and then these are the pieces with the text on it. And is it just me or do those pieces uh, kind of remind you of Beetlejuice? Like if I put in three pieces in a row, is he going to show up and kill me? I don't know. I've never seen the movie. I don't know what happens. <laughs> Oh man, that was brutal. It took me two and a half hours just to do half of the stripes. Well, that took all day. It is just about 4 p.m., but 
I finished the giant Escher puzzle. I am so happy that it's done because my whole body hurts, everything hurts. All right, let's measure out 13 feet and just to see how big this thing is gonna be. Oh my God, this is going to be huge. This is the entire length of this room. <laughs> That's wild. All right, luckily this holds together well enough that I should be able to carefully just pick it up. And, oh, there it goes. No tape on the back? No, no tape on the back, nothing. This took so long to do that if it fell apart while I was moving it, I think I would cry. <laughs> This is so wild. So I had actually already packed this away with like paper in between each section. So uh, this will be an adventure to find just one row. We might be here for a while. <laughs> Okay. No, 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 don't lift it. I got you. I got you. I'm just like, hold on. Let me put the camera down. I don't know what to do. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, well, there it is. They're almost exactly the same length. That looks so cool. Wild. They're almost the same size. into this apartment before I started the Karen Puzzles channel and I had no idea back then that I'd be using this room <laughs> to show off 13 foot long puzzles. <laughs> I mean look at look at this look at how close it comes to this rug. That's it Karen no more large puzzles. <laughs> this is as big as we're allowed to go. <laughs> right. So 
here's what you've all been waiting for, the final statistics. Of course, I kept track of the exact time when I started and stopped working each day. So my total time on this 3000 piece MC Escher puzzle was 25 and a half hours. Here is a chart showing the amount of time I worked on it every day. And here is a visualization of what that time looked like day by day. I think it's really interesting to compare this puzzle to the 24,000 piece puzzle because this 3,000 piece puzzle took almost as long as the 6,000 piece sections of the 24,000 piece puzzle, even though this one is only half as many pieces. And you can see just how much longer the edge took on this puzzle than that puzzle, because that one was a much, much easier image. Also, because that one was an easier image, I was able to work on it for seven or eight hours a day. Whereas with this one, after like, four or five hours, I was just totally exhausted because this one is a much, much more difficult image. So it took a lot more brain power to figure out how it went together. But all that being said, I did really enjoy this puzzle. I think it is super unique. I've never seen another puzzle that is this shape before. If you're someone who hangs your finished puzzles up on the wall, this would definitely be a conversation piece. I do still wish that the sections actually connected together rather than having edge pieces on the short edges and them just lying side by side. But that's really my only complaint. Um, this puzzle is actually very well made, even though the piece shapes aren't visually the most unique. It was really easy to tell when I had a piece in the right or the wrong spot, even when I only had one connector to work off of. Like I hardly ever had to rearrange things. So that made it a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. There were a few pieces that weren't cut all the way through. So I had like a double piece to work with but that's really the only quality issue that I had, and it's a really minor one. So as I said at the beginning of this video, this puzzle is pretty expensive to get on eBay, but if you can get your hands on one, I think it is such a unique and special piece for any puzzle collector. And don't worry, um, since this puzzle is fairly valuable, I did not tape it together. Since the pieces hold together enough to be able to lift the sections up, I'm just going to take it apart into smaller sections and stack them up in the box. And then whoever does it next can easily just take the whole thing apart. There is a chance that I might resell this one day, so I didn't want to permanently, you know, connect it all together. So I think that's about all I've got on this puzzle. Remember to check out the curiosity box. I'm gonna have my link with my discount code right down in the description. Let me know in the comments if this is a puzzle challenge that you would want to take on or if you've ever done an MC Escher puzzle before and if you liked it, your code word for watching all the way to the end will be um, stripes. <laughs> That'll be fun, stripes. So happy puzzling and I will see you all in the next one.